Fun fact, she actually named Jay after me, which I am so honored to be a character in her book. I just love her writing so much, so like I was freaking out when she asked me if she could. It's your girl Jay and today I am here with my November wrap up for 2023. I read a total of 12 books this month. I already filmed part one of the wrap up with the first six books that I read so if you're interested in that it'll be linked down below. So these are the next six books that I read so without further ado let us get started. The first book that I have is The Legacies by Jessica Goodman and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows the Legacy Club which an invitation to the club can open doors for its members. It is no surprise when Excelsior seniors Bernie, Isabel, and Skylar all receive nominations to become Legacies. They come from a long line of members, but when Tori Tasso receives a nomination, people are shocked. She is a scholarship student from Queens who is not the typical nominee, and everyone is dying to know how she secured her nomination. It's kind of the story of that. I am a big fan of books with betrayal, backstabbing, and a shit ton of drama. I also eat up any time that there is somebody who died but we don't actually know who the deceased is and the whole point of the book is trying to discover who the person who died is. I can't particularly say that I cared about which one of them died. I didn't really connect with any of the characters except for Tori, but I did still have a really fun time trying to figure out who it was. Each nominee is hiding secrets from one another and I really enjoyed waiting for it all to be unveiled. We got points of views from Bernie, Tori, and Isabel as well as an alternating timeline between the night of the Legacy Ball and the days leading up to it. The writing style is very easy to follow. I flew through this book in one sitting. It was a fun mystery. I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next, I read They Hate Each Other by Amanda Woody, and I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Jonah and Dylan, who do not get along, even though their friends insistently tell them that they would make an adorable couple. When word gets out that Jonah wakes up in Dylan's bed after a night of partying, the two decide that they are going to start fake dating to get everyone off their backs. As they start to spend more time together, they realize that they actually do have a lot of chemistry and their friends might be onto something after all. I am a sucker for enemies to lovers. I absolutely love that trope. Throw in fake dating and I'm sold. I thought that the pacing of the relationship was really well done. It all felt very natural because I know with fake dating it can happen way too quickly in my opinion, but this is so much more than a cute romance. Both Dylan and Jonah are dealing with their own struggles in this that are explored and dissected throughout the story. I listened to this on audiobook and I think that the narrator did such a good job in making both of these characters come to life. I loved both of these boys so much. I think Jonah is such a good character. He is so sassy and stubborn but has such a huge heart. I also loved the relationship between Jonah and his little sisters. He cares so deeply about those two and he always puts them first. Dylan was just a huge teddy bear who loved to bake when he got stressed which I thought was so cute. I just loved how much these two grew together and really started to care for one another. It was just really nice to see them be vulnerable with one another and learn to trust each other and also the banter between them was so much fun. I will definitely be picking up more from this author if I get the chance. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next I have Gull Island by Anna Porter. I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It was kind of disappointing. This follows Jude who returns to her family cottage on Gull Island to try to uncover some memories from her past as well as her father's will after he mysteriously goes missing. This book is very short but when I tell you it dragged and it was so slow. I could not wait to finish this book, but it felt like a century went by. I really love unreliable narrators. It's one of my favorite tropes, but even with that, I was so bored for the majority of the time. I didn't find any of the characters to be particularly likable. I didn't care about the relationships between them. I also found the writing style to be very choppy and repetitive, which became very tiresome pretty quickly. I did end up switching to the audiobook, which I do think 
think helped with the enjoyment of the story, but I can't say that it was my favorite. I gave it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is Warrior Girl by Carmen Tafola, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So this is a middle grade book. It follows Selena and her family who are Mexican-American. The teachers and other students do not appreciate Selena's heritage the way she does, and so she finds her voice through writing and poetry. I thought that this was a very beautiful middle grade novel. It's written in verse and it covers some very difficult topics such as Black Lives Matter, COVID, racism, family deportation. I really love Selena's family. They were so supportive and just a highlight of this book. It is very short. I flew through this book in under an hour. So if you're looking for something quick, this is definitely your book, but I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read is Billy and the Giant Adventure by Jamie Oliver. I freaking love this book. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. So this is basically a father telling his two children a bedtime story about Billy and his three friends who stumble upon a magical forest that is filled with sprites, boonas, monsters, and giants. When they discover that something is disrupting the rhythm of the forest, they decide to get to the bottom of it, and it's kind of that story. This was so stinking cute. It is set in the 1980s, and it was just such a fun read. I think that so many younger readers will love this story. There's a big focus on environmentalism, and that can be a very difficult topic for such young readers, but I think that it was done in such a great way for the target audience. I listened to this on audiobook. It was a full cast audio, and it also had like sound effects thrown in there at times, which I think enhanced the story so much. The illustrations are so much fun. I think that that was my favorite part of the story. All of the little mystical creatures had such fun personalities that really shone through every time they were on page. I also just really loved Billy. I think that he really overcame a lot of the insecurities that he had at the beginning of the story. I think that it was a really great progression and character arc. I really do hope that there are more adventures with Billy and his friends. I really love this. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. The final book that I have to talk about is There's Something in the Woods by my friend Molly Likovich. I love Love Molly so much. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars, but it is her first draft, so she just sent me her second draft last night, so I'm going to be picking it up, and apparently she is very excited about the changes that she made, so I too am very excited. After escaping the mental hospital that she was put in against her will, Jay steals a car in a snowstorm and ends up crashing. She stumbles across a cabin in the woods, which is inhabited by a very mysterious strange man named Lori. As she hides from authorities with Lori, she discovers that he has also escaped a mental hospital, but he refuses to divulge why, and it's kind of the story of that. We all know by now that I will devour anything that Molly writes. I think she is such a clever writer, and this is definitely no exception. She takes experiences from her own life and weaves it into this novella in such an interesting way. I think that Jay is a very interesting character. I really wanted to know more about why she made certain decisions. Fun fact, she actually named Jay after me, which I am so honored to be a character in her book. I just love her writing so much, so like I was freaking out when she asked me if she could. Lori is a bit terrifying, uh, but I was kind of into it, so it was very confusing in my mind. The biggest complaint I have about this is that it is a novella, so it is way too short in my opinion, which I have already complained to Molly about this. I just wanted more of these characters and I definitely would be interested to read more about them in the future but like I said Molly is reworking her draft right now so that is in my inbox and I'm very excited to see the changes that she made and who knows maybe I'll give it more than a 3.5 out of 5 stars in this next round. Alright everybody so those were the last six books that I read for the month of November 2023. I will not be putting up a December TBR because if you watched my last part one video, um, my grandmother passed away. I started a new job. Just a lot is going on and I just didn't have time. It is December 19th right now when I'm filming this, so there's just no time. Sorry. But I will have a December wrap-up up sometime at the end of the month. So let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!